Uh, first, I would like to thank the organizers for the, their kind invitation. So, uh, as you understood from this long title that uh, I'm working on uh, thrombosis, um, I would just like to introduce a couple of slides about uh, the thrombo, uh, tr uh, thrombosis, and uh, uh, which is consisting of uh, the activation of a coagulation system and basically forming blood clots, and uh, that these blood clots can form um, can make a lot of damage to um, to our circulatory system and uh, can cause tissue damage uh, by occlusion or non-occlusion, which results in a lot of incidents like ischemia and dam fraction. So um, ischemia, of course, is uh, the lack of oxygen due to this uh, blood clots and the insufficiency of um, uh, blood supply. And uh, some infraction, of course, are called by, uh, caused by tissue necrosis. So um, thrombosis causes a major uh, causes of morbidity and mortality. And uh, in Bahrain, where I work as a postdoc, uh, we have a lot of cases of strokes, and uh, um, and this th this pathology is one of the major uh, concerns. So uh, sorry for these images, but uh, I would like to just. Um, illustrate how uh, the damage is um, present on the vascular system and you can see here some damages on the tissues of the capillary system some occlusion and uh, of course this is uh, a coronary artery uh, thrombosis damage so uh, the target of this study is a new basically uh, an uprising target in the, this uh, this film which is the protein disulfidesomerase i would just like to uh, precise that um, uh, blood clotting or thrombosis are treated by two ways. Um, the thrombolytic, um, of course, treatment to dissolve these clots or by prevention, like taking some aspirin or anticoagulant. These anticoagulants are basically preventing the platelets from being activating, uh, activated. Sorry. And uh, protein disulfidesomerase constitutes uh, one of the founding members of thio, uh, thio, uh, isomerase family. Uh, it is a membrane protein and intercellular protein and um, we have where the, the structure is salt and uh, it's uh, basically it's catalytic activity which is uh, disulfide bonds isomerization is uh, associated with two um, active sites uh, that are characteristic of this family of proteins. Uh, this protein is resident in the uh, ER and involved in protein folding since uh, it is associated also to chaperone uh, activity and it is expressed as I said on the cell surface of platelets. Um, this expression is basically at the origin of uh, its involvement in platelet activation and blood cutting. So uh, since a while uh, a lot of studies have described uh, PDI as um, one of the uh, drug targets uh, and one of the enzymes that is um, involved in the platelet activation and the blood clotting process. I'll just explain by this slide. So when you, you get an injury, which is basically the origin of this blood clotting event, the endothelial cell that constitute the uh, blood vessel uh, membrane uh, will express PDI at their surface and the, act the platelets will be activated uh, through this um, these uh, proteins and will adhere uh, with the fibrins uh, to uh, the surface and then these platelets became uh, activated and will express at their surface also the PDI in order to attract other platelets and then the clot is formed. Uh, when the PDI is uh, knocked down in the platelets we can see that the platelet aggregation is no more present and that the the phenomena is prevented. So uh, this is why PDI is considered as a drug target and uh, this is just a display of the family members of this protein and you can see here that the architecture of this family is very uh, common since, since you have kind of uh, two active sites uh, which have two cysteines involved in oxidoreduction reduction uh, function. You have two uh, uh, substrate binding domain, the B and B, B, B prime, an X linker and a C domain which is involved in the protein addressing. So um, the disulfide bond, uh, so PDI has uh, two different activities. One is the simple oxidoreductase uh, activity, which is just exchanging some disulfide bonds with uh, the disulfide bonds in the proteins. And uh, the other activity is the isomerization 
which is basically correcting the disulfide bond organization in proteins and uh, contributing to the proper folding of uh, substrate proteins. So this activity requires the presence of the, the active domain A and A prime with association of the B prime domain, which is very important. When we see the structure of the protein, we see that it's a kind of U shape protein where you have the A and A the A and E prime domain which constitute the active sites domain and you have in this part the B prime domain and the B domain which are the substrate binding domain and this space is allocated to the substrate so the protein holds the substrate and the protein which is unfolded and contribute to its proper folding so we can see that the A domain and the A prime domain constitute uh, or uh, have two um, major pockets that uh, are suspected to hold the substrate and to contribute to the uh, activity of the enzyme and uh, basically all the studies that have been um, targeting this protein are targeting basically the cysteine that are present here and the major uh, compound that were uh, identified were uh, basically um, making some interaction with some cysteines or some re uh, residues that are present in the active site. So um, I would like also to emphasize about uh, the B prime domain since it is important. Uh, the B prime domain, uh, when injection with the A domain and the X domain in blue here, constitute a kind of uh, a part of the U shape. And uh, I will show you the importance of this domain after. When we run some simulation, uh, molecular dynamics simulation of the protein, we can constitute, we can observe that the uh, RMSD is constantly uh, growing um, even after one nanoseconds of simulation. So the protein show is showing a lot of uh, dynamics and uh, flexibility. So we can see here the different frames during the protein dynamics and you can see that the protein is basically very um, flexible. So um, as I said, protein PDI has been considered as a new class of anti uh, of um, thrombosis uh, targets and uh, the inhibitors of PDI are now considered as potential anti-thrombotic agents. One of the agents that have been discovered is uh, an agent uh, flavonol which is uh, basically uh, formed by uh, or um, consisting in a quercetin um, scaffold uh, associated with a carbohydrate which is called uh, the rit rit rutin. Rutin is uh, basically one of the family of this um, big family of quercetin derivatives and you can see that the major difference is residing in the three uh, carbon number three where you can find different um, groups so the importance of these groups is very uh, th this group is very important since it will um, uh, decide whether the, the the compound is active or uh, non-active or active so uh, here uh, I would just, just uh, like to show you how PDI is released when uh, there is a blood, this is a blood vessel and you can, uh, when you provoke an injury by a laser, you can see how uh, the PDI is re released and, and then after followed by the fibrin and the platelet aggregation. In the presence of routine, you can see that there is no uh, clotting event. So. Um, so, rutin has been discovered as a potential uh, inhibitor of PDI with a very specific to PDI uh, class of proteins. So, here you have other members of uh, the PDI family, the thioredoxin ARP5, ARP72, and you can see that uh, its activity is about uh, 6.1 uh, uh, micromolar. So uh, I would just like uh, to skip this. So uh, recently a paper um, appeared in GBC uh, describing how uh, routine is binding to PDI and they have demonstrated uh, interestingly that it's not binding the active site as expected. It is basically binding the B prime X domain which ha has have so shown in the uh, previous slide. So um, our methodology in this work is uh, basically to provide uh, an in silico investigation of quercetin and rutin since they constitute our positive and negative controls um, interaction with the B prime X domain uh, with a, a docking approach and then to uh, perform a similarity search of quercetin analogs since rutin is considered as a derivative of quercetin uh, then to perform uh, a selection of some PDI specific compounds uh, uh, 
via a control screen versus uh, ERP57, which is a close uh, member of the same family, and to run uh, some molecular dynamic simulation and interaction analysis to understand what is happening. So as I said, this is the pocket that have been, uh, let's say, suspected to hold the uh, interaction with uh, the routine. So uh, the docking analysis using routine, the active molecules, has shown that um, the routine binds in a kind of, uh, it's a, I mean, it's a binding in, the, in this pocket with uh, an exposure, a big exposure to, uh, to the solvent and showing a lot of interaction with uh, water molecules. And in the same time, it's having a kind of um, some interaction with some hydrophobic um, uh, residues in, the, in this pocket. So, uh, Okay, so when we run molecular dynamics simulation, we can see that um, routine uh, is, this, let's say, um, provoking a kind of perturbation of the protein stability and enhancing a little bit its flexibility. So um, we didn't have a real explanation about this, but we suspect that the dynamic of the protein is, is essential to its activity. So maybe improving its flexibility um, does matter in substrate binding or the activity of the protein itself. So when we compare to quercetin, uh, quercetin is a little bit more um, let's say incorporated into this pocket and showing less uh, solvent exposure and uh, we basically think that um, this is why uh, it, is, um, it is not active on the protein itself. So, um, and when we run molecular dynamics we can see clearly that the uh, quercetin which is non-active is more stabilizing for the activity of the uh, most stabilizing for the structure of uh, the protein and its flexibility. So we suspect that the flexibility already of the protein is involved somehow in its activity, and uh, by perturbating this activity with this flexibility, we can uh, provoke a kind of inhibition. So uh, to look for new uh, hits, let's say. Uh, we have considered the drug library of uh, zinc databases, um, which is uh, the drugs now uh, database selected on a Lipinski rule of five. We have performed the data filtering thanks to NIME, uh, and uh, in this data filtering, we just uh, compare uh, by uh, fingerprint, Morgan fingerprint, uh, the structure of the uh, compounds that are present in the library to the quercetin compound. We have selected some compounds that, uh, ex uh, that prov provide uh, a tiny motor coefficient uh, more than 0 0.3. And then we, we get from about 10 million compounds, we have selected about 2,580 uh, compounds. So uh, this 2,500 compounds have been uh, subject to uh, uh, first screening against PDI in the B prime X region. Uh, 78 compounds have been uh, selected uh, with uh, an average plus 2 SD um, uh, docking score. Uh, and then the countum screening was performed against ERP57 in a homologous part of this uh, enzyme since they have uh, a kind of high homology in the structure. So, and then we, we have scored and ranked our compound. So this is basically what we get. So the scoring function is just a correction uh, according to the energy of uh, docking to PDI and to ERP57. And uh, we have performed kind of um, estimation of uh, drug, drug lightness of the, this compound. We have selected five from them to uh, be subject to uh, further um, docking. So here you, have, you can see the superimposition, uh, superposition of uh, the different compounds and you, inside the pocket. And you can see that they adopt basically the same pose. And uh, the analysis of their interaction showed that they display basically a good solvent accessibility. In the same time, we have kind of hydro hydrophobic um, exposure in the uh, counterpart of the protein. Uh, we, of course, run some, um, yeah, these are the five other compounds. I don't know why. Yeah, we run some molecular dynamics and we have 
we have seen that uh, this compound provides uh, the same effects that uh, then routine uh, in opposition to quercetin. So uh, we have considered uh, these compounds for further uh, screening, uh, further characterization, uh, of course uh, by um, experimental assays against the recombinant protein. Uh, this work, just to conclude, uh, this work may provide some new insights in PDA inhibition process. Uh, we think that it, sh it can have some effect or some um, impact on the substrate binding capacity of the enzyme or its uh, uh, dynamics, let's say, or flexibility. And uh, we were planning to enlarge our data set for uh, validating this theory and conducting, of course, some in vitro assays uh, to enable, in order to generate some uh, modeling, um, uh, some models for larger screening. Okay, so thank you.